All right. Uh, live stream is starting up. Just doing my normal checks real quick. Uh, nice. Okay, so there's audio working. Let me just get my setup real quick. Check the audio. Check everything is working. Uh, shout out to those who are tuning in. Um, going to try to be a little bit focused so I can actually get some studying in today too to make sure I get through all the content. I think that's the biggest worry about the studying so far because the test is in just a few days and I haven't gotten through all the resources as of yet. But um, pulling up the material, let me start to share my screen in just a second. Uh, let's see, it's a bit laggy. I've been meaning to restart my laptop, which I haven't done yet. Okay, let's share my screen. Get fire pulled up on one side and get the study, my Word doc, pulled up on the other side. Probably going to do my usual, just try to stream for an hour, and we will uh, go from there. Don't mind my I have a piece of hair that's a little too long right now, so it's like sticking out, but it is what it is. OK, I think I have this. Let me just check the audio to make sure the live stream is coming through. Yep, looks good. OK, I think we are ready. Oh, wait, music. I always like to put on some study music. Lo-fi is always good. Let's get that. That's not too bad. OK, cool. I think we're ready to get started. So uh, probably going to try to stream for another hour get through as many resources as possible. Uh, hopefully we can get through the medications today. I think that would, I would call that a goal if I can. And then I think I might stream one more day tomorrow on Friday, but I will probably not stream over the weekend and just spend the weekend just going through all the material, probably getting through the rest of these resources over the weekend, but I probably won't live stream it just to make sure I can get through the content. But uh, I think we're good. Let's go ahead and get started. I think last time we were in the diagnostic section. So going through here, we were, I think we read through service requests last. Let me just check. Yeah, I think we went through this. And then it's just the media content. Yeah, okay, so we'll start here. So read through the media. So the media resource is a photo, video, or audio recording acquired or used in healthcare. The actual content may be in line or provided by direct reference. Oh, interesting. This is a trial use. The orders and observation work groups wants to make the balloters aware. The observations that require the attachment data types are represented by the media resource. Instead of observation, there have been several significant changes to the media resource in order to align it with observation and the workflow event pattern, including the addition of the part of and issued elements. The required type was changed. Uh, an optional category in the subtype element was named to modality. Additional reference targets added to the subject operator and based on elements. The addition of several standard event extensions. I'm just kind of curious if... Um, Usually there's a R5. Is this like, is this not an R5? That's interesting. Uh, yeah, usually there's an R5 link. So if we go back here, is media not? Hey, look at that. There's no more media resource. Okay. So media is, media is gone. So media is gone in R5. That's interesting. I feel like that's, um, so that obviously won't be on the test. The test is just going to be on R4. Um, I wonder if they would ask a question about it on R4. Probably because it exists. Um, 
get a little confused here. Let me just go back to that. Media. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just going to make a note for myself because I think it's like very practical information to know about. Media. Uh, this resource is in R4B, but not in R5. Okay. Good to know. Let's go back here. The media resource contains photos, videos, and audio recordings. It is used with media acquired and used as part of the healthcare process. Here are some typical usages, photos and videos of diagnostic of care, provision procedures for recording purposes, images contained in diagnostic reports. This resource captures a specific type of observation, an observation whose value is audio, video, or image data. This resource is, is the preferred representation of such forms of information as it exposes the metadata relevant for interpreting the information. However, in some legacy environments, media information may occasionally appear in observation instead. Systems should be aware of this possibility. The media resource is able to contain medical images in a DICOM format. These images may also be made accessible through an imaging study resources, which provide a direct reference to the image to a WADO RS server. For, I don't know if I'm butchering that, that uh, pronunciation because I don't know what that is. For such images, the WADO RS framework, uh, it's a funny word to pronounce, is a preferred method for representing the images the WADO RS service may include rendering the image with annotations and display parameters from an associated DICOM presentation state, for instance. On the other hand, the media resource allows for a robust transfer of an image across boundaries where the WADO RS service is not available. For this reason, medical images can also be represented in a media resource, but the media content URL should provide a reference to a source WADO RS service for the image. Now I'm kind of curious, what is, what is a WADO RS? And this, this link is dead. It doesn't take you anywhere. So I'm just going to search for this. A restful implementation of the Azure friendly DICOM web part .net server. Web access to DICOM objects through HTTP messaging. Oh, interesting. I feel, I've never heard of this WADO RS though. Enables users to retrieve specific study series and instance by reference. It can return binary DICOM instances as well as rendered instances. Good to know. Okay. I wonder if they just reverted back to like what was the replacement resource for this in R5. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this is a straightforward resource, so I'm just going to move on especially for the purposes of the test. Imaging study is next. So imaging study, representation of the content produced in a DICOM imaging study. A study comprises a set of series, each of which include a set of service object pair instances, service object pair instances, SOP instances, images or other data acquired or produced in a common context. A series is of only one modality, X-ray, CT, MR, ultrasound, but a study may have multiple series of different modalities. Hmm. I feel like I need to just like read that again to fully understand. So content in a imaging study, a study comprises a set of series each of which includes a service object pair instance required or produced uh, in a common context. A series is one modality. So we have a study. A study can have different series. Each series can only be of a mod one modality. And then a study can have multiple series, so one to many. And then um, those series can be of different modalities in that case. Makes sense. Scope and usage. Imaging study provides information on a DICOM. Is this specific? The representation? Yeah, so this is very specific to DICOM. 
The Imaging Study provides information on a DICOM imaging study and the series and imaging objects in that study. It also provides information on how to retrieve that information in a native DICOM format or in a rendered format such as JPEG. Imaging study is used to make information available about all parts of a single DICOM study. This is random tangent, but I think like off the top of my head, one thing that I'd be very curious about is like, I wonder if the mimic data set, the chest ray data set is represented in fire because they were converting everything to fire. So I wonder if they converted everything to a imaging study resource to cap to capture that information. Uh, and if not, I feel like that'd be kind of a fun project to walk through just to get a better idea of like mapping that to fire. Uh, Cause I've never used this resource uh, before. Imaging, uh, don't know this part. This resource provides mappings of its elements to DICOM attributes. DICOM attributes are identified by a 32-bit tag presented in a canonical form as two four-digit hexadecimal values within parentheses and separated by a comma, e.g. 0008-103E. The name and value representation data type of each attribute can be found in DICOM Part 6 Data Dictionary. The use of the attributes in the context of information objects, including detailed description of use, can be found in DICOM Part 3. Um, I'm just skipping all these. I don't think this is like relevant for the test purposes right now. Imaging study provides access to significant DICOM information, but will only eliminate the need for DICOM query in the simplest cases. The DICOM instances are not stored in the imaging study resource. DICOM instances are not stored. Okay. Use of a DICOM WIDO RX server or other storage mechanism is needed. Um, so this just provides like the, it would almost seem like the metadata of the study and then to actually access the image, it would, you have to reference, grab it somewhere else, like a WADO R server. A imaging study shall reference one DICOM study, so one-to-one -one relationship and may, may reference a subset of that study. Okay, so it's one to one, but it could be a subset of it. Uh, I, so I feel like this could be a good test question. More than one imaging study, more than one imaging study uh, may reference the same DICOM study or different subsets. Huh, that changes it a little bit. More than one imaging study may reference the same DICOM study or different subsets. Shall image so one. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to like process that. So it's like a imaging study shall only at most have one reference to a one DICOM study, to a DICOM study but that doesn't mean you can't have multiple instances of imaging study referencing that same DICOM study or even a subset of that same DICOM study. Uh, nevertheless, this is like a good test question. So this, I'm gonna add this over here. Looks like I, hold on, messed up over here. Okay, let's copy this over. So this is imaging study, paste. Cool. Let's move on. Boundaries and relationships. Imaging study is used for DICOM imaging and associated information. Use media to track non-DICOM images, video, or audio. Binary can be used to store arbitrary content. Document reference allows indexing and retrieval of clinical documents with relevant metadata. I wonder if binary is like the new, um, let me just check. In R5, a resource that represents the data of a single raw artifact as a digital content assessment in its native format. Um, interesting. Does this replace media?
I don't think it matters. Let's keep going. Um, this one's, I feel, pretty straightforward anyways, like imaging study references DICOM studies, a DICOM study. And so I feel like that's it's pretty narrow, the scope. So let's keep going. Molecular sequence. Raw data describing a biological sequence. The Clinical Genomics Committee has identified overlaps and redundancies between content in the molecular sequence resource and content and observation profiles in the evolving IG for clinical genomics reporting found here. The committee is considering options for modding, modifying the resource and anticipates potential changes being brought forward in an upcoming ballot. Molecular sequ a sequence resource is designed to describe an atomic sequence which contains the alignment sequencing test result and multiple variations. Atomic sequences can be connected by link element and they will lead to sequence graph. By this method, a sequence can be reported. Complete genetic sequence information, of which specific genetic variations are a part, is reported by reference to the G4, GA4GH repository. Thus. The fire molecular sequence resource avoids large genomic payloads in a manner analogous to how the fire image imaging study resource references large images maintained in other systems. For use cases, details on how this resource interacts with other clinical genomics resources or profi profiles, please refer to the implementation implementation guidance document here. Um used to describe the sequence variations with clinical significance with information such as name of variation. So I wonder if this is now replaced, like does this, so it still lives in R5, still a representation of a molecular sequence. Uh, let me see. I'm just going to read the R. So molecular sequence resource should only be used to capture a molecular sequence. It will not be used for other entities such as variant, variant annotations, genotypes, haplotypes. These concepts will be captured in observation profiles found in the genomics reporting IG. The sequence that was observed that led to the identification of those concepts can be delivered with this resource and will be referenced by those observations. Molecular sequence will not be used to capture data such as precise read of DNA sequences and sequence alignment are not included. Such data may be accessible to references to GA4GH. API may be referenced by the formatted element. Um, memory doesn't serve me well of what exactly are we trying to ref reference as a molecular sequence here. Uh, I used to be a big fan of genomics. I'm not really a huge fan anymore. Uh, I, it's just been so long since I've looked at genomics type data. This is like too granular for me to like really like formulate a good mental model for. So I just want to see some examples. One base character counting, ordinal position. So it's like modeling like a single gene inside like you know the big picture of dna yeah this i don't actually think i've really done much work in this specific of an area but the name itself should make sense i think the test questions regarding molecular sequence will probably be fairly straightforward just because it's so specific so for that purpose i'm just gonna read this and move on Boundaries and relationships. The focus of the re of this of the resource is to provide sequencing alignment data immediately relevant to what the interpretation on clinical decision making originates from. Hence, data such as precise read of DNA sequences and sequence alignment are not included. Such data are nonetheless accessible through references to GA4GH API. The molecular sequence resource will be referenced by observation to provide variant information as clinical assessments, diagnosis of a patient are typically captured in the condition resource or the clinical impression resource. The molecular sequence resource can be referenced by the condition resource to provide specific genetic data to support assertions. 
This is analogous to how condition references other resources, such as allergy intolerance, procedure, and questionnaire resources. That makes sense. Okay. Um, let's see what else is in here. So you have patient, specimen, device, quantity, chromosome. It's like bringing back some biology class stuff. Yeah. Uh, okay, good enough. I need to pass the test. <laughs> I need to move on. So specimen. Specimen is a sample for to be used for analysis, scope and usage, any material sample taken from a biological entity, living or dead, since specimen taken from a physical object or the environment. Some specimens are biological and can contain one or more components, including but not limited to cellular molecules, cells, tissues, organs, body fluids, embryos, and body excretory products. The specimen resource covers substances used for diagnostic and environmental testing. Uh, for diagnostic environment. The focus of the specimen resource is the process for gathering, maintaining, and processing the specimen, as well as where the specimen originated. This is distinct from the use of substance, which is only used when these other aspects are not relevant. This is distinct from substance, which is only used when these other aspects are not relevant. So the focus specimen is the process for gathering, maintaining, and, and processing the specimen as well as where the specimen originated. Okay. The current definition of the specimen resource contains only basic information about specimen containers. It does not address the recursive nature of containers or the tracking of the location of the container within its parent container. For instance, a tube in a tray in a rack in a freezer. The frequency with which these elements are tracked may depend on the context of use, general lab, biobanking, etc. Comments from reviewers on the appropriate scope for this resource and the need for tracking related specimen management attributes are welcomed. So specimen. This, oh yeah, it does reference substance. Or at least this part. There's multiple references to substance. So yeah, I feel like so substance is just a thing without any concept of probably gathering, maintaining, and processing. I feel like this would be a potential test question here. And it's fairly straightforward, I think. Um, but just like last minute, kind of like, I'll probably put all these into flashcards just to give myself a little overview of what all these refer to and just some of those nuanced differences. So when you take the test, you can answer some of these faster. Okay, just go back to this tab. Straightforward. You're collecting something for testing purposes. So that's a specimen. Body structure. Record details about an anatomic structure. This resource may be used when a coda concept does not provide the necessary detail needed for the use case. I mean, is that to say, like, if Nomad doesn't reference a specific body part, you can use this to create or represent that concept. That's how I'm interpreting it, but I feel like that's not right. Scope and usage. The body structure resource contains details about the anatomic location of a specimen or body part, including patient information, identifiers, as well as text descriptions and images. So this sounds like an instance. It provides for the addition of qualifiers such as laterality and directionality to the anatomic location for those use cases where pre-coordination of codes is not possible. The body structure resource supports recording and tracking of an anatomic location or structure on a patient outside the context of another resource. For example, it could be the target of a procedure resource or observation resource. 
the body structure resource <clears throat> excuse me the body structure <clears throat> The body structure resource is not intended to substitute for pre-coordination of codes. If pre-coordination of codes is supported by an implementation, the codable concept should be used. This resource is not intended for describing the type of anatomical location, but rather a specific body site on a patient. Um, let's see. So what do we have here? Identifier, active kind of structure. So you have morphology, location. These are all snowmen. Location qualifier, description, and who it's about. And what kind of examples they have? A fetus. Location is entire fetus. Uh, okay, I don't think that's a good example. Is it, well, that's an interesting example. A mass. Okay, this makes sense. So the morphology is a mass. You're saying there's a specific mass, or rather a splenic mass in location. Uh, in the spleen. And there's an image of it. Yeah, so it's like an instance of a specific body location for that patient, for a given patient. And the, the resource seems fairly straightforward, so we can move on. Cool, diagnostic module is complete. We're gonna move on to the next one, which is medications. Okay. And I'm gonna be right back. It's getting a little hot in here, so I'm just gonna turn on the AC real quick. So be right back. All right, and we are back. Let's move on to the medications module. Uh, this should be fun. So the medications module, this module is concerned with resources and functionality in three main domains, the ordering, dispensing, administration of medications and recording statements of medication use. Recording of immunizations given or not given, evaluation of given immunizations and recommendations for individual patient at a point in time. The creation or querying for medications as part of drug information or drug knowledge. All right, uh, let's start with the very first one, medication request. So medication rep, uh, requests is an order or request for both supply of the medication and the instructions for administra administration of the medication to a patient. The resource is called medication request rather than medication prescription or medication order to generalize the use across inpatient and outpatient settings, including care plans, etc., and to harmonize with workflow patterns. I think I've always just thought of this like as an order. And I think that's the most that mental model is really good. It's prescription or order. That's what these kind of re represents. This resource covers all types of orders for medications for our patients. This includes inpatient medication orders, as well as community orders, whether filled by the prescriber or by a pharmacy. It also includes orders for over-the-counter medications like aspirin, total parental nutrition, and diet vitamin supplements. may be used to support the order of medication-related devices. 
Uh, I assume that's like insulin pumps. It is not intended to you for use in prescribing particular diets or for ordering non-medication related items like eyeglasses or supplies. In addition, the medication request may be used to report orders or requests from external systems that have been reported for informational purposes and are not authoritative and are not expected to be acted upon. Examples are those that were already dispensed or administered. The medication request resource is a request resource from a fire workflow perspective. The request resource allows requesting only a single medication. If a workflow requires requesting multiple items simultaneously, this is done using multiple instances of this resource. These instances can be linked in different ways depending on the needs of the workflow. So I, I, this is like, um, or is that just making sure the mental model is correct? So medication requests isn't only thought of like, despite it being a request resource, usually in a request resource, you have, you expect it to be acted upon, but that's not the case here. It could be acted upon because it is a request resource, but it can also be used simply to report information that has already happened, AKA you don't need to act on it. So it's like cataloging, a history of meds in addition to like this could be a thing that's happening right now um i feel like that could be a little confusing in some ways because like i feel like you could make it more intuitive by separating this but um it's obviously a reason why they do that medication request resource oh no i read that already the medication re request resource is used to request or order medication for a subject. It may also be used to report a medication request or order from one organization or source to another. When requesting supplies or devices, when there is a patient focus or instructions regarding their use, supply requests or device requests should be used instead. When reporting on the usage of a medication by a patient, the medication statement resource should be used. Uh, okay, number of related objects. So medication requests an order for both supply of the medication and the instructions for administration of the med to the patient. Med dispenses provision of a supply of medication with the intention that is subsequently consumed by a patient, usually in response to a prescription. When the patient actually consumes the med or it is otherwise administered to them, this is a record of administration being taken by a patient or that the medication has been given to a patient where the record is the result of a report from the patient or another clinician. A medication statement is not part of the prescribed dispense administer sequence, but is a report that such a sequence, or at least part of it, did take place resulting in a belief that the patient has received a particular medication. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I feel like th this one feels very comfortable because like it's, just, it's a medication order the, and the data elements that will go along with it. Um, I'm not going to go through this in detail because it's going to need to continue going through the, the content here. So move on to the next resource, medication dispense. Indicates that a medication product is to be or has been dispensed for a named person or patient. This includes a description of the medication product, supply provided, and the instructions for administering the medication. The medication dispense is the result of a pharmacy system responding to a medication order. Uh, the medication dispense is the result of pharmacy. Okay. Scope and usage. This resource covers the supply of medications to a patient. Examples include dispensing and pickup from an outpatient or community pharmacy dispensing patient-specific medications from inpatient pharmacy to ward, as well as issuing a single dose from ward stock to a patient for consumption. The medication dispense is the result of a pharmacy system responding to a medication order. Medication dispense is an event resource from fire workflow perspective. We already read that at first. This resource does not deal with the supply or transfer of non-medication related items to a patient. Background and context, the supply and the associated administration instructions might not exactly follow the original order. 
either because some details were left for completion at this point in the process or because the dispenser exercised their clinical judgment to make some appropriate modifications. All makes sense. I'm not going to go into the data elements for that. Med admin describes the event of a patient consuming or otherwise being administered a medication. This may be as simple as swallowing a tablet or it may be a long running infusion. Related resources tie this event to the authoring, authorizing prescription and the specific encounter between patient and healthcare practitioner. This resource covers the administration of all medications and vaccines. Uh, I don't think I realized they covered vaccines too. Please refer to immunization resource for the treatment of vaccines. It will be principally be administered within care settings, including administration. Oh, I guess that makes sense actually. We give a immunization in the vaccine, you would, you would probably want to capture that on the MAR. To record the capture of medication administrations, including self-administrations of oral uh, medications, injections, intravenous adjustments. It can be used in outpatient settings to record allergy shots and other non-immunization administrations. In some cases, it might be used for home health reporting, such as recording self-administered or even device-administered insulin. Medication administration is an event resource from a fire workflow perspective. Medication administration is intended for the track for tracking the administration of non-vaccine medications. I feel like this conflicts with the thing they just said at first. Administration of all uh, medications and vaccines, and it's like is intended for non-vaccines. Administration of vaccines is intended to be handled using the immunization resource. Some systems treat immunizations in the same way as any other medication administration. Such systems should use an immunization resource to represent these. If systems need to use a medication administration resource to capture vaccinations for workflow or other reasons, they should also create and expose an equivalent immunization instance. That makes sense. And I feel like this, this is like one of those areas that's going to be super uh, different because I've worked at plenty of places that represent immunizations, how they are administered, uh, how they're even like built differently. It's going to differ by organization to organization. So, and this, this feels like they're leaving it up for implementers to determine, but this is nice. So it's like, if a immunization or rather a vaccine is given uh and you have to use this you should also have this i feel like actually this is a good test question just knowing that so in the circumstance that you're not following the best practice of using the immunization resource to document it uh, and you're using medication administration you should it doesn't look like a hard or fast rule but you should also create that immunization record so you can capture that administration in there so I feel like that could be a test question. It's also really good to know that that is the recommended approach. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to go through the data elements for MedAdmin. Medication statement. A record of a medication that is being consumed by a patient. A medication statement may indicate that the patient may be taking the medication now or has taken the medication in the past or will be taking the medication in the future. The source of this information can be the patient, significant other, such as a family member or spouse or a clinician. A common scenario where this information is captured is during the history taking process during a patient visit or stay. The medication information may come from sources such as the patient's memory, from a prescription bottle or from a list of medications the patient, clinician or other party maintains. The primary difference between a medication statement and a medication administration is that the medication administration has complete administration information and is based on actual administration information from the person who administered the medication. A medication statement is often, if not always, less specific. There is no required date time when the medication was administered. Uh, in fact, we only know that a source was reported to the patient 
is taking this medication where details such as time, quantity, or rate, or even medication product may be incomplete or missing or less precise. As stated earlier, the medication statement information may come from the patient's memory, from a prescription bottle, or from a list of medications the patient, clinician, or other party maintains. Medication administration is more formal and is not missing detailed information. Uh, to all my fellow pharmacy colleagues out there, we know that this pro usually comes from uh, one and more than likely all of the above. Uh, for, yeah, good times. Scope and usage. Common usage includes the recording of non-prescription and or, oh, hold on, uh, the recording of non-prescription and or recreational drugs. I'm, I'm trying to di digest this for a second. OTCs make sense. Do people usually record this in med at mid med history? I guess you could. I feel like this is more commonly seen in like a like a note, you know, like your social history. The recording of a intake med list upon admission to hospital, the summarization of a patient's active medications in a patient profile. A medication statement may be used to record substance abuse and the use of other agents such as tobacco or alcohol. This is weird. I feel like we don't ever ask this. It's not very common to be asked in like a med history. This would typically be done if these this would typically be done if these substances are intended to be included in clinical decision support checking, for example, interaction checking, and as part of the active medication list. Um, no, I don't think I disagree with that. I feel like if I was building CDS rules, I would check social history, not the med list. That, I feel like that's not very accurate. If the intent is to populate, oh, there it is, social history and or to include additional information, for example, desire to quit, amount per day, negative health effects, then it's better to record as an observation that could be used to populate social history. That seems like the better way to do it. Uh, this resource does not produce a med list, but it does produce individual med statements that may be used in the list resource to construct various types of med lists. Note that other med lists can also be constructed from the other pharmacy resources, medication requests, uh, medication administration. Medication statement is not part of the prescribed dispense administer sequence, but is a report by a patient, significant other or other clinician that one or more of the prescribed dispense or administer actions has occurred. Resulting is a belief that the patient is, has, or will be using a particular medication. Medication statement is an event resource from a fire workflow perspective. Boundaries and relationships. The medication statement resource is used to record a medications or substances the patient reports as being taking, not taking, or have taken in the past or may take in the future. It can also be used to record medication use that is derived from other records, such as a medication request, the statement is not used to request or order a medication supply or device. When requesting medication supplies or devices where the patient is a focus or instructions regarding their use, the med request supply request or device request should be used instead. Uh, this resource is distinct from medication requests, med dispense, and med admin. Each of those resources refer to specific events and in individual order an individual provisioning uh, of medication or, of a, or an individual dosing. Medication statement is broader is a broader assertion covering a wider time span and is independent of specific events. The existence of resource instances of any of the preceding three types may be used to infer a medication statement. However, medication statements can be captured on the basis of other information, including an assertion by the patient or a caregiver, the results of a lab test. Okay. Uh, Self-explanatory, very akin to like a med list or a med history. So I'm gonna keep moving on. Medication resource is next. This resource is primarily used for the identification and definition of a medication for the purposes of prescribing. Oh, hold on, I need to read this again. 
primarily used for the identification and definition of a medication for the purposes of prescribing, dispensing, and administering a medication, as well as for the for making statements about medication use. Representing medications in the majority of healthcare settings is a matter of identifying an item from a list and then conveying a reference for the item selected into a patient-related resource or to other applications. Additional information about the patient about the medication is frequently provided for human verification, but a full representation of the details of composition and efficacy of the medicine is conveyed by referring to drug dictionaries by means of the codes they define. There are, are some occasions where it is necessary to identify slightly more detail, such as when dispensing a package containing a particular medication requires identification both of the medicine and the package at once. There are also some occasions, like custom formulations, where the composition of a medicine must be represented. In these cases, the ingredients of the medicine have to be specified together with the amount contained, though the medication resource does not provide full details. The medication resource allows for medications to be characterized by the form of the drug and the ingredient or ingredients, as well as how it is packaged. The medication will include the ingredient and their strengths, and the package can include the amount, for example, number of tablets, volumes, etc., that is contained in a particular container. For example, 100 capsules of amoxicillin, 500 milligram per bottle. The medication resource can be used to describe a compounded, aka extemporaneous, or magistral. I don't actually think I ever uh, seen that used. This is the more common one. Learn, learn something new. I, I just want to actually look this up. It's kind of curious. Master or masters. Interesting. Um, compound a product that is manufactured by the pharmacy at the time of dispensing. In this case, there will be multiple ingredients, which are typically base chemicals, for example, hydrocortisone powder, and there may be other ingredients that are manufactured products, for example, glaxo base. When a medication includes a package, further details about the composition can be provided. A package has a container, like a vacuum box, a jar, etc and a list of the products or packages that are in the package. Okay, so we have a... I haven't really used this resource as much, so it's gonna glance at the data elements a bit. So we have a code for the medication, a status, manufacturer of the item, the form, the amount, the active ingredient, which could be a codable concept, a substance or reference another med, especially for compounded meds, then you can reference that active ingredient indicator is active. This makes me think back to like Epic ERX build strength batch. Okay. I think like in reference to like Epic, especially the medication resource is like an ERX record. The medication request resource is like a order, like an ORD. I wonder how common it is for people to implement this medication resource uh, and use it like how, how you use it in Epic. And, and I guess like another way of thinking about it too is like, it seems like a definition resource in some ways similar to like a plan definition, activity definition, those kind of definition resources or device definition, things like that. Um, but I feel like I don't see people talk about medication resource being used pretty often. All right, medication knowledge. Information about a medication that is used to support knowledge. Note that this content is preliminary. Oh yeah, that is maturity level zero. I wonder if you, yeah, so I see it in R5. Trial use. So it's still sticking around. I've never really seen this resource used. Content is preliminary, has not undergone gone proper review by the appropriate work groups. This resource supports use cases for creation of and querying for drug information. 
including attributes such as drug classifications, images of medications, drug costs, and or coverages. This resource can be used to return drug information as part of a formulary or a catalog. Um, interesting. I guess like the first thing that comes to mind here is like, could you use the list resource instead? And that list resource, if it has a type, could be like a drug formulary. Medication knowledge. Uh, so this has a code, a status, manufacturer, dose forms, related information, monograph. Hmm. Ingredients, prep instructions, cost monitoring program. This seems like a package insert like what you would find in one I'm kind of curious what they what's an example uh vanco you have a ndc you have a manufacturer dosage form and this this almost seems like a medication resource too uh yeah, I, I haven't seen that used very often, and so I, it makes sense. Like medication knowledge, just used to support knowledge. So I'm not going to give it more thought. Let's move on to the next one. Um, immunization. So the immunization resource describes the event of a patient being administered a vaccine or a record of immunization as reported by a patient, a clinician, or another party. The immunization resource is intended to cover the recording of current and historical administration of vaccines to patients across all healthcare disciplines in all care settings in all regions. This includes immunization of both humans and animals, but does not include the administration of non-vaccine agents, even those that may have or claim to be immunologic effects. While the terms immunization and vaccine vaccination are not clinically identical, for the purposes of the fire resources, the terms are used synonymously. Additionally, the immunization resource is expected to cover key concepts related to the creation, revision, and querying of a patient's immunization history. This resource, through consultation with the public health work group, is believed to meet key use cases and information requirements as defined in the existing HL7V2 Immunization Implementation Guide. HL7V3 POISE? I don't know if I'm saying that right. POISE? Domain and Immunization Domain Analysis Model. Boundaries and Relationships Administration of Vaccines is intended to be handled using the immunization resource. MedAdmin is intended for tracking the administration of non-vaccine immunizations. Some systems, uh, we, we set that up first. So it's basically, if you're using MedAdmin, you should also create the immunization instance. Immunization reaction may be an indication of an allergy or intolerance. If this is deemed to be the case, a separate allergy intolerance resource instance should be created to indicate it, as most systems will not be created against past immunization reaction. That makes sense. And that's like the whole issue I was thinking of with like social history. I don't think most people query a med history, a med statement to grab tobacco or, or uh, alcohol use. Uh, this right here sounds like a test question too. So if there's a reaction potentially to an immunization, then you also want to create a separate allergy intolerance resource. So that's, that's a good. It actually come to think of it, this actually might not be a good test questions. And I wonder if like a lot of these that I'm putting down here are not good questions because I believe the test is much more conceptual where I think it's just like stuff up here, but practical wise, it's really good to know these kind of nuanced things here. Okay, so immunization uh, status completed. 
this check I assume completed means you gave the immunization. Um, status reason, vaccine code, what was added. And I assume the, yeah, these are CVX codes. This makes sense. Oh, they have a separate one for, oh no, yeah. So they have a administration date, when it was first recorded, lot number, route, dose quantity, education, reaction, details of a reaction that follows. I wonder like, when do you record this actually? Indicating that an adverse event is associated in time to immunization. Reaction may be an indication of an allergy intolerance that's deemed to be recorded as a new allergy intolerance. This is like during the immunization, like when you're giving it, and you would document there when uh, when it happens. Uh, okay, I mean, otherwise it's, it's fairly straightforward. It's called an immunization, so makes sense. Let's move on. Oh, we're, we're already at the one hour mark. So what we're gonna try to do actually is uh, just read through these last two resources and I will feel pretty good. Immunization evaluation describes a comparison of an immunization event against published recommendations to determine if the administration is valid in relation to those recommendations. That's interesting. The immunization evaluation resources, resource is intended to cover communicating the results of an evaluation of a vaccine administration event. So a completed one documented using the immunization resource against a set of published recommendation protocols. And one of this is like a plan def. Evaluating administered doses in a patient immunization history is central to ensuring that the patient is fully protected against vaccine preventable diseases. It is also a necessary prerequisite to generating a customized set of immunization recommendations for the patient. The immunization evaluation resource communicates the results of an evaluation of an instance of the immunization resource relative to a set of published recommendations. It is intended to communicate if the vaccine administration event was valid or not valid relative to the recommendations. Once all vaccine administration events in a patient's record have been evaluated. Oh wait, uh, let me just go back here again. So is that all events? a comparison of immunization events against published recommendations. So is it comparing just one or is it comparing all? This seems to be a single one. So you would, for every immunization a patient has, so one immunization resource will ha all have an associated immunization evaluation resource that evaluates whether or not it's valid or not. I think that makes sense. Uh, once all vaccine administration events, so this is going basically going through all of them in a patient's record have been evaluated, is then possible to generate a set of vaccination related recommendations unique for the patient. These recommendations are communicated using the immunization recommendation resource. As the immunization evaluation resource is focused on the evaluation of a single vaccine administration event. It does not include data regarding the overall patient status relative to the recommendations used in the evaluation. For example, a total of three doses of hepatitis B vaccine may be required for patient protection, but an instance of the immunization evaluation resource will be concerned with only one of the doses, although other instances of immunization evaluation should exist for the other doses. The immunization recommendation resource is used to convey the overall patient status a dose is due or the patient is complete relative to the hepatitis B series. Through fire release three, the immunization resource contained a protocol backbone element which functioned as an evaluation of the vaccine administration event. Beginning in release four, this new resource replaces the immunization protocol element. That makes sense. I think my question is just whether why didn't they use like the guidance response? Uh, or a plan def to evaluate this. Um, or, or perhaps it's just important enough that you separate it out into its own resource, you know? 
uh, this makes it kind of easy in some ways for immunization so I mean, it's fine immunization recommendation a patient's point in time set of recommendations forecasting according to a published schedule with optional supporting justification the immunization recommendation resource is intended to cover communication of a specified patient's immunization recommendations and status across all healthcare disciplines and all care settings and all regions the set of customized for the patient recommendations is based on the comparison of the patient's immunization history with a set of published recommendations protocols additionally the immunization recommendation resource is expected to cover key concepts related to the querying of a patient's immunization recommendations and status this resource through consultation with the public health work group is believed to meet key use cases and information requirements as defined in the existing hl73 we read that already this resource references the following resources and this resource still exists in r5 so just taking a step back i think thinking through this is when you go visit your doctor this might be a scenario where you would have a system that will go through all the patient's immunization resources which would capture all the vaccines that they've ever ever received an immunization evaluation resource at the time would go through each one of them and check it against something like the cdc vaccine schedule return whether or not it's valid or invalid and then after all that is done the immunization recommendation resource would then come in and show which ones are or what the recommendation should be if they're missing any tell them which ones they're missing um, things like that i think that's fairly straightforward i just i think it bothers me that it's it seems like its own little thing versus being part of the guidance response and guidance request kind of framework okay so this is done um i'm gonna call it quits for today actually it's only six minutes over so it's not too bad i feel pretty good with the amount of material that i got through uh tomorrow i'll get through workflow and then maybe terminology if I get through both, I think that'd be, I'll be a pretty happy camper. Um, cause I got through all these and then, oh, there's so many down here. Um, yeah, we'll see how much we get through. Um, but I'll leave that for tomorrow. I think I'm gonna call it for tonight. Uh, thanks guys for tuning in. If you're tuning in for some fun fire stuff <laughs> late into the evening, uh, otherwise I will see you all tomorrow. See y'all next time.